Welcome to New York Gut Game. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of New York Gut Game. It's a tale of two teams in the Big Apples. The Nets, well, they keep on losing. And the Knicks, they keep on winning with OG Ananobi. Now, the two teams, they actually played each other last week. And I was in the building at the Barclays Center for what was a very entertaining game between the two squads that saw the Knicks pull out a win. But we tip off the show with news surrounding the New York teams. First up, around the Knicks, the NBA named their all-star starters last week. And point guard Jalen Brunson, he was not named a starter. The Knicks guard finished tied for second in the NBA all-star voting with the Bucks' Damian Lillard. But with the Milwaukee guard garnering more fan votes, he will take a starting spot on the Eastern Conference squad over Brunson. The point guard stats on the year, they're quite impressive. Brunson is averaging a career high in points with 26 and a half per game and also shooting a career best 42.4 percent from downtown. While he was not named a starter, Brunson will await to see if he will make his first all-star team as a reserve. The all-star reserves, they will be announced on Thursday. Now, the struggling Nets, they could have some good news right around the corner as the team could have their biggest name back on the court really soon. Ahead of Brooklyn's game against the Timberwolves on Thursday night, head coach Jacques Vaughn announced that Ben Simmons, who's been out for two and a half months with a lower back nerve impingement, could return as early as this week, possibly Monday at the Barclays Center when the team hosts the Jazz. Simmons worked out at Thursday morning shoot-around, and head coach Jacques Vaughn has said he is still progressing. Simmons has only played in 48 of the Nets 162 games since he was acquired during the 21-22 season. Over those missed games, the organization has paid him $46.2 million. This season, Simmons has only seen action in six games and last played back on November 6th against the Bucks. In those games, Simmons averaged six and a half points, 6.7 assists, and 10.8 rebounds while shooting 52.8% from the field. All right, those are the news and notes around the NBA locals, but on this episode, we're going to talk about New York's WNBA squad, and we're going to do it with two of the best covering the Liberty. So, let's get right to it. The Liberty are heating up. The WNBA offseason is heating up as free agency got underway last week. As of January 21st, teams are allowed to negotiate with players, though no deals can officially be signed until February 1st. This all means the offseason for the New York Liberty, well, it's heating up. Coming off of a season which saw a trip to the W Finals, how will New York tweak its roster as they attempt to capture their first ever championship? Joining me to answer that question and much more around New York's professional women's hoop squad is Liberty Beat reporter for Winsider and co-host of Pull Up with Miles and Owen, Miles Ehrlich, and the best WNBA insider in the game and founder of Girls Talk Sports TV, Christina Williams, and both Join me now here in studio on New York Got Game for the first time. How y'all doing? This is actually my second time. But I was going to say, I my second time. No, the first time both of you together on oh, New York Got Game. That's fair. It's Christina's <laughs> second appearance on New York Got Game. We got the facts right for the people. We're good. How are y'all doing? Doing good. Yeah, doing, doing good? Doing good. Doing good. Off season Catching up on sleep. You well. yeah. Catching up on sleep. It's about to get busy, though, Miles. We yep. know that's going to happen. I'm glad to have you guys here because we got to talk some W free agency, especially around the Liberty. What are they going to do? How's it all going to work out? So, guys, before we dive into what the Liberty can do during free agency, I'm going to start with this question for both of you. Because following the team's loss to the Aces, game four of the finals, general manager Jonathan Kolb said that the focus would be to improve the bench, something that we had talked about, particularly the backcourt on the defensive end. Is that still the main area that needs to be upgraded with this team? Or is there another need that you could see the team addressing in terms of their roster this offseason. Miles, I'll start with you on this one. I think that, well, yes, the, the bench needed needed to be addressed and overhauled a little bit. Uh, the first things that were important were taking care of, making sure that that front court was back. Brianna Stewart, who they signed to that core deal, and John Quell Jones, who was an unrestricted free agent. And Jackie Powell from the Next reported the other day that John Quell wants to be back with the Liberty. So that's a huge sigh of relief, I'm sure, for that front office. So once that's figured out, then you can start to think about what the other needs are. What Because it really, it's about the aces, right? That's, that's, what, that's what the benchmark is. That's, they're back-to-back champs now. You want to stop that dynasty from, that's forming in front of our eyes. So it's not about separating from the rest of the pack. It's not about the regular season. It's about 
the margins. And I think that they know now, they saw defensively in that backcourt that that's where they needed a little bit of help. And whether that comes in free agency or in the draft, that needs to be addressed. And I, I looked at some of the numbers because I knew they were rough and maybe eye test made them feel maybe a little better because it was a back and forth game. But in the regular season, the Liberty were third in defensive rating. They were four out of eight teams in the playoffs. But then their defensive rating in that finals was 10 points worse than it was during the regular season, which would have been worst overall in the regular season. That's how much trouble they had. And a lot of it was in transition. A lot of the problems were in transition where during the year, they were in good shape there. In the three games that they lost, they gave up 23 points a game. And in the one game they won, they gave up three points. So a lot of that came down to some of that fatigue in the backcourt. I think if you have some fresh bodies back there that can kind of buy into the system, because now there is that established system, that will definitely be something that can help them. It's interesting for them keeping the main thing the main thing mm -hmm. in terms of them wanting to upgrade defensively in the backcourt this summer. And, Christina, are you on that wave, too, that there doesn't need to be a change in the focus of what they need to do to make this team better? And like Miles said, yeah. it's not about separating from the rest of the pack. It's about can you, what can you do to make your roster better to beat the Aces? Well, yeah, last season was all about building that team chemistry. And I think that this season it will be all about continuity and how you can, as Miles said, add to what you already have to get better. Obviously, the Aces will have a target on their back as the back-to-back -back champions. And so I think for the Liberty, what they need to do is add reserves to that front court. Uh, in exit meetings last year, Jonathan Kolb talked about how important it was to move away from that big, heavy uh roster that we saw last year in the reserves because they had four centers on the New York Liberty roster in John Quell Jones, Stephanie Dolson, Han Shu, and Nier Saboli. And so we know Han Shu will not return in 2024 due to her national team commitments. Chances that Stephanie Dolson will return is very unlikely due to Sabrina Ionescu's contract. Miles talked about crunching the numbers. She's moving from her rookie skill contract to a contract that's worth about $202,000. And so with that, plus you have to re-sign uh, Stewie and John Quell. It just doesn't make sense to bring a player like Stephanie Dolson back. And so I think for the Liberty, in order for them to be successful, they have to, you know, look for free agents who are like stretch bigs, who are who's good at shooting, but also can defend and be versatile with how they defend because the perimeter defense was such a weakness uh, within the Liberty. And so I think that they should focus more on that going into 2024. All right, so it's going to be interesting to see what their <laughs> focus is with that, right? Looking to get some bigs that can stretch the floor, also trying to get some perimeter defenders and how they go about doing that. We're going to dive into more of that. Christina, I want to get back to you on something Miles had talked about because you reported last week the free agent center, John Paul Jones, intends to re-sign with the Liberty. I know fans are happy to hear that. How important is it that New York brings back their defensive anchor for another run of the title. Well, it's very, very important that they bring John Quell Jones back. We saw how um, things changed for the Liberty, especially in the second half of that season when John Quell, she started to get healthy. Um, she really was that anchor for the New York Liberty on both sides of the floor, uh, especially in the finals when we talk about usage and the numbers, right? So Brianna Stewart, I forgot to say this in the last question, but she averaged over 38 minutes per game in the WNBA postseason. John Quell, she was about 25 last season, and so she's a great rim protector for the New York Liberty, great defender, double-double machine. Um, and so, I, again, going back to continuity, you want to bring her back. You want to continue to build on what you already have. And so, yeah, the fact that she's she uh, her agent reported that she's – intending on coming back to the Liberty, I think that it'll be great. Yeah, it'll definitely be great for her. Look, I like the C words, because everybody knows who's watching me with Christina. Last year, all Christina said was chemistry, yes. chemistry, chemistry. Yep. <laughs> this season, we got a new C word in continuity. <laughs> I, see, I see what the vibes are going to be here. Miles, just talking about that, with Jones looking like that she's going to be back, that means it's likely that, as what Christina said, the team is not going to be able to bring back reserve center Stephanie Zol Dolson, Hanju, likely won't sign a WNBA contract this year due to her commitments with the Chinese national team for the Olympics. Do you think that the team is going to give second-year player Naira Sabali more playing time at backup center, or is this a situation where they'll look for other options via free agency? The Liberty organization loves Naira Sabali. They love what she brings. She is just great basketball IQ. And, and I always go back to this anecdote where it was second or, or third day of training camp last year. And she was on there telling people where to go 
Well, she was on the court telling people where to go in Sandy Brondello's system as a rookie. I know that she had redshirted basically, but she wasn't around the team the year before that. She really picks things up. And that part of that was because she was an assistant coach in her off season when she wasn't able to play as a rookie. And they love that. She is a magnet for offensive rebounds. And she's really, I think we saw kind of going through some of those, those freshman rookie jitters where she was sped up a little. So I think having those reps under her belt is going to be really helpful in the next season going forward. And also what she brings, some of that versatility that you talk about. Mm -hmm. She can stretch. She can put the ball on the floor. She's a terrific outlet passer. So she can really start that, that fast break that they want to get going. So they would love for her to be able to step up into that role. I don't think that they're going to put all of their eggs in that basket just because that is you are backing up John Quill Jones and Brianna Stewart. Right. So they're going to need someone else. But there are internally just uh, in terms of overseas stashes or just players that they've been connected to. I think that might be an approach. And Christina, you've talked about it, I think, all over social media, that, <laughs> that these reserves are pretty deep. You, there are some positions like point guard that are getting a lot of a lot of the talk. But for what the Liberty are looking for to kind of bolster this bench, that can be found out there. That can be found out there. You can't see that. We'll get to the point guard market in a second because that is not the, it's not the same. It's a totally different market there. Christina, that brings me to you because I think fans of this team, and it goes to what Miles said when they're looking at the way this roster is and the struggle they had against the Aces. Fans want to see the team add another guard. I think who's a two-way player that can guard on the perimeter. As Miles brought up the numbers, we know those are the issues. One of the biggest names in the market, we got to talk about this, folks, is a player who's likely to be playing on a new squad this coming season. You know, I'm talking about that is Skylar Diggins. The Liberty, we know they're really limited with cap flexibility here. There's not that much they do. So, got to ask this for the people. I'm doing it for the people out here. <laughs> is there any chance they could sign the 2022 WNBA All-First Teamer? And if so, how do you think she would fit in New York? That is a loaded question, yes, Dexter. We come, we come loaded here. Uh, but firstly, I want to address the cap. And so we saw last season how bought in some of these players were in terms of taking less money so that the Liberty could have room to sign some, some new players. And I think that that same energy is going to carry into the 2024 season where you see some of these players like a Brianna Stewart, maybe a John Cole Jones holding out from signing their deals or their offers to make sure the Liberty um, have enough cap to be able to sign big names or those reserves that we talked about. And obviously, Skylar Dickens-Smith is one of the most sought-after free agent right now on the market. As you mentioned, she's a great two-way guard. I think in 2022, what people failed to realize was she was an all-star. She made all WNBA first team. She averaged over 19 points a game, four rebounds, five assists in that season. And then in 2022, she also led a Brittany griner list Phoenix, Phoenix Mercury team to the postseason. And so, of course, the Liberty, they would try to, you know, go after anyone who's a free agent who can fulfill that need. But I think that right now we're going back to that continuity word. Uh, um, here we go. <laughs> a lot of the, the high the high value free agents on the market, especially at that point guard position, they want to start. And I think that for, for the Liberty and what they are trying to do in terms of building out their roster, Courtney Vandersloot is on a protected veteran contract for over $190,000 next year. And so the chances that they trade her, I think, is very slim. And so I think that they're going to run with their core group, um, the five that we saw last season, obviously. And so, you know, the chances that they si sign a player like Skylar Diggins smith is probably not likely. Um, although she, she would probably welcome open arms here in New York City, I just don't see it fitting because – she would want to start, and right. then it's like, how, how do you, you know, satisfy right. your players, things like that. So that's the only reason why I can't see Skylar Diggins-Smith coming to New York. But obviously, any team that she gets added to, they're automatically going to be better. Oh, no <laughs> oh, no doubt about that. So. You heard it from the WME Insider. It's not me disappointing the fans <laughs> here about Skylar Diggins uh, out here. So we, we understand that. I got to bring up for you, Christina, another big name guard that mm -hmm. people are going to talk about that could be a good fit. Um, next to the stars on this Liberty team. That's Natasha Cloud. Yeah. Um, but some of the similarities still are here. We're not saying Natasha Cloud's is Skylar Diggins. We're not saying that. But can the Liberty or should they pursue the versatile defensive point guard? I think that the Liberty is definitely interested in pursuing a player like a Natasha Cloud. She definitely fits within that system, especially when we talk about the needs of what she can provide as a defensive player, as a facilitator, as a playmaker for um, the New York Liberty. Last season, she averaged over 12 points, over six assists. 
uh, for the Mystics. She finished in top five in assists in the last three years. And so that's definitely someone that can benefit in a system with the New York Liberty. Now, whether she signs there or not, it goes back to that same issue with Skylar Tegan Smith of who are you going to take out of that starting five to bring on a player like a Natasha Cloud? And I think that that's just what it boils down to. It's not about the money because because we know that the players on the Liberty are willing to take less. And so that's the question that you would have to approach when you think of a player like Natasha Cloud. I think a lot of times when you talk to basketball fans, right, or sports fans in general, I'm not sure they value the C word that you've been mentioning here, <laughs> right, the continuity. It does matter. This yeah. stuff does matter to a degree in terms of championship building with the team. Miles, I want to ask you about another point guard that could be on the market for the Liberty, and that's Los Angeles Sparks point guard Jordan Canada, free agent who has been cored but could be available via sign-and-trade. Could she be a sign-and-trade candidate for New York, or is it the same things that we're talking about with Christina in terms of Skylar Diggins smith and also Natasha Cloud? It's the same situation where this is going to be tough to happen. Christina's been talking about continuity in her answers. I'm going to say it with with these answers. Yeah, so I'm going to just kind of stay where she's at here, too, where when when you talk about also Natasha Cloud being a player who was top five in assists the last three years, you know who's at the top of that list is Courtney Vandersloot. So we talked a little bit about backcourt defense, but what, what Sloot provides for that team I don't think can be overstated. Jordan Canada is rightly ready to... Take the, she took a leap last year. She deserves to be starting somewhere. She deserves, you know, a lot more than the training camp salary that she got last season. And she balled out two career highs basically across the board. She led the WNBA in steals. And then 13.3 points per game, 3.1 rebounds per game, 6.0 assists per game. Those were all career highs for her. And what we actually saw at Athletes Unlimited last offseason was that she played with a confidence that we have always been asking for, especially from three. She was taking those threes. In her first five seasons, she made 29 combined threes on 16.8% shooting. She made 41 last year, so more than her first five years combined on 33% shooting. So she basically doubled her career output in terms of her percentage, and she was just taking them with more frequency. So somebody is going to be very, very happy with Jordan Canada and who was also on my all-defense ballot, too. So she's one of the best two-way guards. She was on my guard as well. Yeah, so she was one of the best <laughs> two-way guards in the W. But again, this comes down to should a player like that who has established herself in a league that has a, a position scarcity at point guard, should she play behind somebody else? Because she did that for the first couple of years of her career in Seattle. I think that Jordan has just outgrown that role. And she'll be somewhere else. And it's not because New York wouldn't want her. Right. It's because she deserves to be on a bigger stage in terms of just the ball in her hands. And I love the word you use here. And I think this may give people some context for what we're talking about with all these players. And it sounds disappointing that we've heard from Miles and Christina that's no, no, no to these players. These are good two-way point guards. And there's a scarcity, as you said, Miles, in the market. And if you, it's about do you want to make a move for a move's sake? Do you value the continuity? And also addressing and looking at the market and the scarcity that there is there. So it might be a little bit disappointing for Liberty fans, but continuity, I, not my, Christina said the C word. I will say <laughs> that ahead, you're Mark. saying that there might be disappointment in free agency for Liberty fans because they have five all-stars. Yeah. Right, they have five, five all-stars on the team. But, but you know what, Miles? Sometimes the fans get greedy. We, we, <laughs> we, we have seen that. They, they hunger for more. They want a little bit more, they, and that might be happening. I understand. I, it won't I, be last year's offseason. No, <laughs> and that's going to happen. You have the, the yes, that's a really good point there, right? Last year's offseason, such... Big bangs, if you want to say, such big moves. It's spectacular a marathon, moves. not a sprint. Right. So. And team building is, it takes time and continuity. That, that word came up again. Who knew? All right. This question I have for both of you, right? Considering the amount of money that the team is tied up, right? And there's stars. And we just talked about Sabrina Nescu, John Quill Jones, Brianna Stewart. Who is an under the radar or value free agent that you think the Liberty should look to sign this offseason? Because we know the fans want the big names. They want the sexy names mm-hmm. out there. But in terms of team building, under the radar, value free agent signings can matter. I think you guys would agree with me on that. So, Christina, I'm going to start with you, too. Do you have an under the radar free agent that you think could be good for the Liberty to look at or try to sign? Yeah, there's a few names on my list, so I'll just talk about two for the time's sake. Um, But what comes to mind immediately is Shea Petty. 
She is a guard that uh, has relationship with San Coach Sandy Brandello. She mm -hmm. played under her when Coach Sandy Brandello was in Phoenix. And sources say that, you know, Shea Petty, she's not going to return to the Phoenix Mercury. Her future with the Mercury is doubtful, and she's open to meeting with other teams in free agency. And so that's a name that I would look out for. She averaged over five points in uh, last season coming off the bench as a reserve, but the only thing I would pay attention to is her health. She had issues with her Achilles that took her out for one and a half years, and so she announced this week that she's back. She's going to be playing in London in the off season, but I think that she can provide um, um, good playmaking, ball handling. I know Coach Sandy praised her basketball IQ mm -hmm. at one point, and so she would be a good backup guard for the New York Liberty. And then another player that I'm keeping my eye on is Tiana Hawkins, and I actually almost voted for her for sixth player of the year on my ballot last year, but she started 21 games due to Mystic's injuries last season. And she's someone who's flying under the radar, not being talked about enough. She averaged over eight points, five rebounds last year. She played average of 23 minutes for the Mystics. Uh, she shot 49% from the field and over 33% from the three. We know that the Liberty loves the three-point shot, um, but she also is someone who can run the floor, who can block shots if needed, hit outside shots, and also defend. And I think that she would be a great boost of energy as a reserve off the bench for the New York Liberty. Sources says she's already meeting with teams like the Indiana Fever and the Phoenix Mercury. And so if I'm the Liberty, I would get on that phone right now and call Tiana Hawkins um, to see what her availability will be like for next season. With that and that continuity, she's a player who's already excelled in, mm -hmm. in a reserve role and that kind of matters because when you're playing with the stars that the Liberty have, she can come in and she seems like somebody who could be a good fit there. So those are some good names there in, in Hawkins. What about you, Miles? Who do you have your eye on as a good potential value free agent signing for the Liberty? So finally, something we can say that would make Liberty fans excited. <laughs> instead of go. just saying no all go. the time. Right, right. Well, to, to further that, a reunion, I think, with Rebecca Allen would be fantastic oh, yes. for this team. Beck would fit on every single one of these 12 rosters in whatever role you put her in. And her, her numbers don't necessarily jump off the page, but everything that she does in terms of just being a cog in that defense with her length and with her just selflessness – and that's on the court, off the court, just a terrific human being that really helps too. She was with the Liberty in the lean years, so these fans can relate <laughs> to, to <laughs> what Beck stayed through. And then she was traded last year in part of that, that John Quill Jones deal that brought JJ and Kayla Thornton here to kind of fill that role. But she would be a fit for any of these. And I think that the Aces are a team that would be also very happy to have her. <laughs> yeah. But I will also say that I believe that Beck gets very, very comfortable where she is. And that, I think, was pretty obvious when she stuck through New York when there were offers elsewhere. And she didn't leave by choice. So she was very happy in Connecticut last year. If they offer her a good deal, she might just stay. But if New York does, she's familiar with here, too. And, and she has connections, obviously, to everyone in the franchise, but also to Sandy Brodello, as who is the head coach of the Opals, the Australian Opals, as well. So yep. they're going to be playing together later this summer so i think that could be a fit to keep reunions going dd richards is playing in australia right now and she's looked phenomenal there i know that liberty fans were really upset when she was not on the roster last year and she was the last cut and i think it had more to do with the salary cap than it mm. did in terms of fit because we know exactly what she brings in, in terms of a hard-nosed defender, right? In terms of someone who will dive on the, on the floor, who will push in transition, who can get into the, into the paint. And I think we saw in training camp last year that she was doing all that even more and shooting with more confidence. And that's carried over to Australia as well. So uh, she's been generating some interest, and, and I love that for her. But also, she would fill one of those needs that this roster has as a low-usage offensive player, but as a high-usage defensive switchable player, which is exactly what they want on this team. Well, you know what I learned there? You know what helps with continuity? Reunions. That can help, too. <laughs> that can help, too. Got an R word, helping a C word. Yeah, got, some, got some good stuff there. Uh, Miles, I want to ask you about this uh, player, too, because with Maureen Johannes likely not available this season due to her Olympic commitment with the French national team, um, are there players that the Liberty own the rights to that could help the team this season where their addition could almost be viewed as a key free agent signing? Because I think we're thinking about a lot of players that are on the free agent market, but there are some players that teams own rights to that could sort of give a boost to the team. Are there, is there any player in mind like that for the Liberty? So I think that one of the problems that the Liberty will encounter this year, which might 
hopefully be fixed in future years with prioritization, I'm hoping, addressed, is there's been a, a nice France to New York pipeline, and the French League is difficult, which is why we won't see Marine Johannes this year. And also Marine Faltho, who's also a draft pick and is phenomenal, plays the Marines play together overseas. Uh, Leone Fiebisch is someone who I think, though, the Liberty would keep an eye on for this year. She is a stretch. She plays that 3-4, that wing defense, but also can stretch out to three, put the ball on the floor a bit. And the Liberty are excited about her. She was a pick last year. Uh, and I think that is the kind of player that we could see almost in a Niara Sabali kind of role where she could try to grow in and they could see what they want. They, I think that New York would be happy with her ability to score on three levels because that's kind of what they need. They need to surround their star power with these complementary players that can be somewhat of that Swiss Army knife that they, they've been looking for. But yeah, I, I do think that some of these concerns might be addressed more in the draft than they would necessarily within what the Liberty have overseas. And that's a good point, too, because as we forget sometimes, I think when we get to the start of the offseason, draft is still part of the team building. It's not just about free and signings and trades. There's also another way to build the team, and that is through the draft. So with so much focus on free agent signings at this time, could either of you see the team? I know I just talked about this trading. Could you see them trading a player moving off of a contract to add some more depth to the roster because that's something we're talking about is a need of the Liberty. Is that something that either of you can see happening? Christina, I'll start with you. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that the Liberty and Jonathan Cole, what they're tasked with doing during free agency uh, in terms of trying to, again, field a team that can contend for a title and win. Uh, but with the core that they already have signed in Sabrina, Benaja, Kayla Thornton, uh, et cetera, I think that they're not going to move away from that core. Who are you going to trade um, of your core? And plus, you're bringing back the two key players in Brianna Stewart and John Paul Jones. So I don't think that the Liberty are going to survey the trade market right now. I just don't see that happening. I think that, as Mal said, they're going to address it in the draft, but also address it in this free agency because the pieces that they need are available right now in the market. And again, players are willing to take less in order to get the bigger picture going. Right. Have, so. have a chance to be a part of a team that can absolutely contend for a championship, as many people think delivery would do. Do you see it the same way, Miles, that the trade market is not an option? Or I mean, listen, teams not are going to do, not they're do their it's due diligence. Option, yeah. yeah, I want to be clear. I want to say Jonathan Kolb and, and the Liberty <laughs> front office. They're going to do their due diligence. They're going to look at every opportunity they can. But do you see trade as not maybe the likeliest option in terms of building up this roster for 2024? Yeah, I mean, I think... What Christina said about players would come to New York to take less, that works forward, but that also works backwards when you look at the contracts they already have. They mm -hmm. have Benajah Laney already took less. Kayla Thornton, I think, could have gotten a lot more on the open market. So they would be trading value contracts for, and they already have these players that do a lot of what they need. So it really wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be an upgrade. It would be a lateral move just to shake things up. But I don't think that this is a team that needs to shake things up right now. I think that this is a team that knows what their core is and is now complementing. They're now supplementing that. So I don't see them attacking the trade market unless it's something to do with, you know, draft picks, swaps, or, or some kind of future asset. But I think the core is the core. And they believe that this team can not just compete, but win a championship. Core, continuity, chemistry. <laughs> with reunions, all, all these things going together. See, this, this is the theme of, of the offseason. Last thing for me before I get you guys out of here. Um, we still have the draft to go coming up in April, and there's still more in terms of this team building. We're just starting free agency. But for you got both, what does a successful offseason look like for the Liberty? How do you see the roster shaping up over the next few months? And I guess basically what I'm asking is, if you look at this offseason, when it's done, It'll be successful because the Liberty team looks like what? How do you see the team looking? Miles. That draft pick is huge for me. I think that could make or break. And, and that's wild to say because you're, at a, you're in a team that's in a championship window right now. But you don't want this window to be 2023 to 2024 and then close. So you look at what the next step might be. And you say, all right, we need to maybe think long term about what the point guard situation might be beyond this season. And this would be the perfect year to bring somebody in behind Courtney Vandersloot. Or this is just every, every day growing into more of a, a wings league. So 
do they want to look, do they want to go that route? And I, I put down a couple of names that I thought that the Liberty should probably look at, but also with this being the last year of, of this, these COVID years, of these COVID where everyone can stay for an extra year, you don't know who's going back to school. You don't know who's coming out. So being at the 11 spot, there are so many variables in front of them. But uh, J.C. Sheldon is someone who I think could go as high as the lottery, could fall out of the first round, but I don't think so. But I, I've seen some of that in some mocks. I think she probably goes top six. If she's there at 11, just as a, a defensive guard who can also, she's energy for days, everyone on that Ohio State team, Celeste Taylor's another one, energy for days. They're just always pressing, stealing, running the other direction, but also running an offense. That would be big. Um, I've got Georgia Amor, who's less defensively, but she obviously made a big name for herself at Virginia Tech. And her jump this year in terms of assists is she's now near the top. I think she's fourth in the country in assists after never averaging over five a game in her first couple of years. So they really put the ball into her hands a lot more. And she's also attacking a lot more. Her, she's doubled her two points, her, her percentage of points from two this year. So she's got the ball in her hands and she's getting to spots to score and shooting really well from the mid-range, which is somewhat of a lost art. Um, Nardia Poch, who's in Australia, so obviously connections to Sandy Brondello, which is so born in 2004, which is going to sound ridiculous to us, but because she's not playing in, the, uh, in, in college basketball in the U.S., she can be drafted even though she's 19 years old. So that would be a little bit of a project, but she really projects. I've, I, I watch her game and I see movements that are very similar to things that I saw Natasha Howard doing, where she could put the ball on the floor at the three-point line, get to the mid-range, put up a floater or, or step into a jumper. Stewie does some of that with, with some of her finishes around the basket. So that's really impressive. Uh, shout out Mark Schindler, who wrote a terrific piece about her. They, uh, he did an interview with her a little while ago. And I, I pulled a quote from it because I just had to, had to share this. But when she was playing for, uh, when she was first playing at the four, she was not used to it. She's 6'3", but she was not used to just banging down low, setting screens. Her perspective was, she said, why would I look at this in the most negative way when I could just be positive about it? If I'm guarding someone a little bit slower, I can beat them off the dribble. If I'm going off handoff, if I'm going off handoffs, I can run down, I can trail, I can shoot the three. So just that kind of perspective and that kind of mindset, mm -hmm. if you put her and Stewie into a room together, <laughs> I think really great stuff would come off of that. So there are just a lot of names. Charisma Osborne, I had mentioned very quickly yeah, before. Yeah. One of my favorite names. Yeah, me, yeah. me Christina, Christina and I Charisma. talked about that. About, about, we talked about that after the lottery, all players, they could do. I, a lot of what you said there, Miles, that I find interesting, Christina, I kind of want to see if you, you hop on that. Miles said that, you know, he thinks that 11th pick in the draft, really important, right? Uh, do you hold the same value on that in terms of, they kind of need to nail this to extend the championship window for this team and also address their perimeter defense needs. Is that going to be the make or break thing in terms of how you view this offseason? Um, yeah, I totally agree with Miles when it comes to, you know, kind of investing into the younger players and who can learn from Stewie or John Paul or Courtney Vandersloot. Obviously, Courtney has more years behind her than ahead of her. And so what is the future long term of the New York Liberty going to look like, as Miles mentioned? And so uh, I think that the number 11 pick is going to be a very important asset for the New York Liber Liberty. I like J.C. Sheldon and Charisma Osborne as a possible pick. Not sure if J.C. as Miles mentioned because of her versatility, if she will even be available at that number 11 pick. But, you know, I think that, yeah, they should definitely consider, you know, going all in on that number 11 pick when it comes to thinking about the future. Like I said, it's a marathon and not a sprint with this franchise, but you also have, you know, these core players who are reaching their prime. And right. Brianna Stewart is mm -hmm. very much still in her prime. John Paul Jones, very still much in her prime. Sabrina Ionescu, uh, Benaj Laney, Caleb Thornton. And so um, I think that, you know, the rest is still to be written for this New York Liberty team. But 2025 is also a very big year because you have that new Golden State Warrior team coming in and that expansion draft that might happen. And so lots to think about. And then with the core players, their contract is fired in 2025. So, again, what is the New York Liberty going to look like beyond just the 2024 season? That's something right. to think about. Right, and that's, that's very important. Go ahead, Miles. And I would just add on to that. The, this year and next year, these draft picks – 
they'll be on the old pay scale, right? Yep. So right. that I don't know how those negotiations are going to go if they're going to get a pay bump, but I think that might be part of why it's important to nail these picks. But again, we said at the at the top, this is kind of in the margins, right? Because they've got so much of the the substance of what they're how they're going to run this team. So it's really about those little. The, it's about inches. It's not about feet at this point. Right. Yeah. And as Christine has been saying, this is this is not a <laughs> this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. But can you find where can you find value? Which I think mm-hmm. people should take to increase that continuity, as we've been saying. Right. Like where can you find to do that? The draft is an excellent way in any sport to do that. Can you find talent that can play beyond their contract and get that value and also hit the needs that you want? We'll see if the Liberty can do that. This is the start of the offseason. I had to have you guys both on New York Got Game so we could talk about the Liberty offseason. We are going to keep the conversation going with the Liberty as we go through the offseason. And, guys, a couple months away from the regular season, which means you as an insider, Christina, it's already busy. Miles, doing the great work you do around the Liberty, it's about to get busy. He's caught up on sleep. We're going to try to keep both of you guys rested. Thank you all for joining me in New York Got Game. Always a pleasure to talk Liberty with you both. Always, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. That is Miles Ehrlich, Christina Williams. Check out their work. Appreciate y'all. That is all the time we have for this episode. Special thanks to my guests, the great Miles Ehrlich and Christina Williams. Also, much love to my director, Joe Masali, producer, Lee Insler, and editor, Antonio Oliveras Nicole. I'm Dexter Henry, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of New York Got Game. And thanks for watching New York Gut Game. Boom shakalaka.